Red Bull RB7 2011 championship winning Formula One car. Challenging the normalcy of midday traffic on the city streets of Weehawken and West New York, New Jersey. So what the hell was that all about? Well, let me tell you a story. In late 2011, word got out that New York City and New Jersey was going to have a GP race. All the way back to 1983, there were pronouncements of open wheel races coming to New York. So when Leo Hendry, a very politically wired New York business guy and racing aficionado announced he had a deal, I still said to myself, yeah, we've heard all this before. Now cut to June 2012. Infinity and Red Bull invite us to the official New Jersey Grand Prix press conference in Weehawken across the river from my New York City to announce the F1 race and to show us the construction of the pit garages. We came to get interviews and video all the action. David Coulthard and Sebastian Vettel were on hand giving ride-alongs in their Infiniti G37 IPL performance cars. New Jersey state and city officials were on hand. The cops were there, acting like everything was under control. Until we jumped into the Infiniti with Coulthard for our police escorted hot lap. And that's when it became apparent New Jersey was not up to speed on F1. The streets were not shut down. Regular traffic was not diverted. The escorted laps were more like scenes from Ronin the movie. As we cut through traffic, jumped red lights behind the cop car at 80 to 100 miles an hour. One officer had to swerve to avoid T-Bone crashing into a Camry. We can't show you the video because, mysteriously, all the in-car video footage went missing. The one piece of footage that we did sneak out of New Jersey was Seb doing his unauthorized donuts. Watch this cop's reaction. <laughs> but all that gets us to today in our latest chapter on the New Jersey F1 story. 12 hours ago, Mike Spinelli gets an email about something Red Bull happening in Weehawken the next day. Show up at a certain New Jersey fire station at 10 a.m. to learn more, it says. Spin kind of blows it off. JF, who lives in New Jersey, remembers hearing about the Lincoln Tunnel being closed for filming. No further details. Holy we're real journalists figuring out a story. So a 10 minute New York City to Weehawken ferry ride later, we arrive at said firehouse location to find two RB7 Red Bull GP cars, a race crew of 10 people, Renault engine techies, and 30 Red Bull Media House videographers. And it was obvious, Red Bull the racing team was serious stuff. So doing my thing, I started chatting up the crew guy that looked the most plugged in. Turns out I guessed right. He was Tony Burroughs, the head of the team here to run the cars. But this was no simple promo team. Burroughs and the lads are the support team to the F1 race team. I'll let him explain exactly what that means. Okay, this is a support team. I mean, our primary function is to support the race team. So what we do most of the year round is we either travel to races to support them, or we go and do development testing, aero testing in Spain is our main function. We do a lot of that. Uh, as you know, Adrian uh, likes his aerodynamics and uh, we're always trying to improve the car and trying to find them few tents to get the jump on people. So that is our primary function. With the um, restriction in testing that they have now, find ourselves with a bit more time on our hands. So what we do is we take one of our championship winning cars around the world, running up and down uh, highways and uh, main roads and just try and bring some awareness of Formula One. These are our RB7 cars we have here. We have uh, Sebastian Vettel and Mark Webber's cars. We always bring two because you've got to take enough spares so you might as well build it up into a car and we can always react quickly if we have any problems. So that's why we bring two cars. We arrived uh, last week, just before the weekend. We've been preparing the car. Um, our first run we did was on Monday uh, where we went to Liberty Park and we drove up Freedom Road and along the boardwalk and got some spectacular shots of the Manhattan skyline in the background cool. and the Statue of Liberty. So that was our first shot on the first day. On the second day, we, uh, we went back and did some more along Freedom Row, some of the shots that we missed, and then we decamped and went down to the Lincoln Tunnel last night. At about two o'clock this morning, we were running backwards and forwards through the tunnel. Looks fantastic in the dark under those lights. The car looked wonderful. So uh, first couple of runs with me in a camera car, directing uh, what I want David to do. Uh, and then the second and third runs was just him flat out. So it, it was really cool and Red Bull Media House are equally buttoned up and hot stuff. 
You know them from the Art of Flight and the Austin F1 cowpunching promo videos they did, among other work, like taking on WRC promo videography. So all the right players were here and ready. The Red Bull team, David Coulthard to drive the car, the camera crew, New Jersey cops, the city politicians. Surprisingly not here was anyone from the race promoter group. For now, here's the car prawn we caught as Red Bull Media House shot their promotional video, which will be online in a week or so. And David Coulthard did his race car thing. By the way, Tony explained for an event like this, the ride height goes up half to three quarter inch, softer springs go in the car not to put as much strain on the parts, and fans are installed on the radiators to help airflow. And David, he said he just leaves himself a bit more margin driving so as to not auger the thing into a tree, a house, or the Starbucks here in New Jersey. And we couldn't shoot the car up close because it really is the real spec 2011 championship car, and pieces like the exhaust are very much like the current configuration. Ferrari, McLaren, and Lotus, they don't need any extra design help, thank you. And then we had a few words with David Coulthard. So David Coulthard, we're here in New Jersey. You're the only guy that's driven both U.S. Grand Prix tracks that are coming up in 13 and 14. Tell me about this track as it compares to the personality of Austin. Well, two completely different venues and two great tracks in my opinion. Uh, the one in Austin, it's a purpose-built track out near the airport, you know, easy access to the city. It's going to be really challenging for the drivers but it is a bespoke race course that will be used 12 months of the year. Here in New Jersey, you have a track which is going to be a combination of Monte Carlo, Singapore, Valencia, you know, the, the street circuits we go to. But what will make this unique is not just the great backdrop of Manhattan, it's the fact that it will be 200 miles an hour across the, the front straight, which will make it the fastest street circuit that we race in Formula One. Now, you just drove parts of this track, and even though it was a promotional run, uh, you were carrying a little pace. Mm. Uh, which parts of the track already caught your attention from a, from a racing driver? Okay, well across the top section, and excuse me, I don't know the name of that street, but the, the natural curvature of the road actually adds an interesting challenge for the driver. They were talking initially about completely flattening that area out, but I, I think it adds personality to the track to have this sort of big wide open crest, and I don't think it's an issue at all for the cars. When you drop down past the sewage works or the water treatment plant, um, that's incredibly fast, over a brow into a really long sweeping right hander that then brings you onto this front section and that's where it's all going to be flat out and wide open and uh, you know I think the tracking shots for when we come here for the race will just look incredible the fans are going to have a great view those who've got apartments and houses along the race course they get a free view 19 turns hairpins high speed passing zones already figured out in your mind yeah absolutely and uh, top section before you do the 90 right down the hill great overtaking zone Likewise, before you come onto this front section and then down into the pits complex here, which they're still working on, I think we'll give three really good overtaking spots. For Formula One, that's already more than a lot of the tracks we go to. in the U.S. What do people in the U.S. need to know to want to come to this race? Well, Red Bull wouldn't be doing this if they didn't think that it was going to be something that was going to be popular with the, the public. You don't need to know anything about Formula One. If you like cars, if you like speed, if you're intrigued to know what makes uh, Formula One the fastest form of, of closed circuit racing in the world, you know, that's a fact. That's not, you know, we're not just sort of doing that as, uh, as PR. You, these are the fastest cars around the racetrack and of this type of nature. And the technology is the technology of tomorrow that you'll have on your road cars. You know, carbon fiber was first developed in Formula One, traction control, turbocharged engines, all of those things came because of Formula One racing. You're an announcer with the BBC, so without trading your, your trade secrets, what's the current vibe and news in the F1 pits and paddock? Is it all about drivers? Is it all about Mercedes? Is it all about new venues like this? What's, what's 
carrying their attention right now? I think actually we're getting an overdose right now in Formula One of excitement because we're having an absolute golden era in terms of the drivers battling for the championship. Uh, Red Bull have dominated the last couple of years, but it's a real battle this year for them with Ferrari, with McLaren, Lotus are right there looking like they can get a win as well. Mercedes, of course, have, have won a Grand Prix. So we've got some great drivers uh, and a very competitive series of Formula One. Future is about new technologies, as I mentioned. They're going to go to turbocharged, tur tur turbocharged engine, sorry, my Scottish speech impediment, uh, in 2014. And again, that's all about trying to, you know, eat the maximum horsepower out of the smallest engines possible, you know, doing the bit for the, the environment by uh, making them more fuel efficient. Now, I'll, I'll go on record and pick. I want to watch Alonso for the rest of the race, Battle Vettel. Mm. Do you have any favorites as this uh, season winds down? Well, things I, to look for. Yeah, I think that it's fair to say that it's very difficult for me not to feel passionate about Red Bull because I've been part of the, the journey right from the beginning. But when I step in the commentary booth, I just talk about what I see. And there's no question for me that Raikkonen or Grosjean, but for me, probably more likely Raikkonen and Lotus is, is going to get a win very soon. He's just looking stronger and stronger. And you just need to look how disappointed he was to finish second uh, in the last race in Budapest to see that he's really hot for it. Uh, you know, Alonso has been incredible. You, you've got to say he's the benchmark in Formula One. That doesn't take anything away from Sebastian or, or Lewis or any of those guys, but Alonso's used all his experience to put himself leading the championship at a time when he doesn't have the best car. So there's a lot of good stories out there, and we're just past the halfway point in the season, and it is going to be a development battle. It's not just about the drivers, it's about teamwork. Last question, you're racing DTM, third year. Do you want to come back here and race? <laughs> I would love to come back here and race, but I think my uh, my time in Formula One is well and truly over. But I don't suppose uh, DTM will be coming here soon. But you know, maybe there'll be some other form of uh, support race that I can get involved in. So where are we here with all this? Well, without sounding like Motor Trend with their PR-heavy opinions, the Red Bull video is gonna be mega. And thanks for the insider invite to document the making of the piece. But why is this video being done in the first place? Well, yeah, to promote the race. But for the record, there is no race until it shows up in the official F1 calendar. And Hindry, if you recall, already got called out by Bernie Ecclestone for suggesting this race is a done deal. How dare you do that? That's my job, says Bernie. But that also may be just Bernie negotiating, saying not so fast and where's my check? Yet, Hindry's people told me the money's all in place. Yeah, but didn't Danny Bahar from Lotus tell me the same thing about Lotus in an earlier shakedown? So maybe this video isn't a promo for the race, but a pitch video for the promoters to use to get the money for the race. And is this race a 2013 happening or not? Well, Coulthard suggested the roads don't need to be repaved. The promoters say everything will be repaved. When that happens is a factor of East Coast winter, and getting it done early enough for Pirelli and the teams to laser scan the tracks for simulations and to analyze the tarmac for grip. If it doesn't happen soon enough, this may be a 2014 race. Bottom line, we love the video Red Bull's about to show us all. We'll watch for the 2013 F1 schedule announcement. We'll monitor the construction and paving. We'll get ready for a June 2013 race. Or we'll do this whole thing again one year later with a video for the 2014 race. So in that one, since Ken Block raced a bridge in his video, Coulthard raced the Lincoln Tunnel in this shoot for 2014, Let's get Vettel to base jump off the Empire State Building versus Mark Webber pit stop to see who hits the ground first, Seb or Webber's tires.